Greetings, fellow saints. Coming to you with another midweek meditation. And I don't know that I'm always going to be in the Psalms, um, but we are in Psalm 2 today. And I, I won't be surprised if we're often in the Psalms together when I make these shorter videos on Wednesdays. Uh, and that's because I'm pretty much always in the Psalms. I'm, I'm tr I try in my own reading of Scripture to always be in the Psalms and always be in the Gospels and always be in one other place, um, in, in one other portion of Scripture, so that I'm, I'm reading through the whole Bible slowly, but I'm also always coming back to these two center places for me, which are the Psalms and the Gospels. I find the Psalms bring my heart and my prayers, um, my worship and my emotions to life in the presence of God. And so I'm I, they're just, they're so good, and they're so life-giving for me, and I, I relish the opportunity to share that with you. So we're in Psalm 2 today, and I'm going to read it and then talk about it, and in the same way as all of these, um, I'm keeping it short, so there's way more to say than I'm going to say. I'm just going to highlight a few things. But here we go, Psalm 2. Why do the nations conspire, and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds asunder, and cast their cords from us. He who sits in heaven, in the heavens, laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath, and terrify them in his fury, saying, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall rule them with a rod of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise, be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord, rejoice with trembling, kiss his feet, for he will be angry, and you will perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are all who take refuge in him. Um, I went to Psalm 2 because I was in Psalm 1 last week, and I read this, and, uh, and I got to verse 3, and I stopped, and I, I read again from verses 1 to 3, because they give the whole context of the psalm. Everything that follows flows from this beginning position of the nations and the kings, setting themselves against the Lord. And what they declare is that they are going to burst the bonds that the Lord has placed upon them, and they are going to cast the cords of the Lord and his anointed aside. They are going to um, take off the rule of God and the yoke of God, and they're going to go their own way. This is the goal. And this is what God laughs at. God looks at them doing this and he laughs. And he speaks, he says, I've set my king on Zion. And there's a sense in which it's like, what? there's nothing you can do, right? And that's the source of the laughter is just this complete, um, like it just doesn't work. It doesn't fit. Like you, you are counseling and you're gathering together and you're planning and you're putting all your effort into doing something that is impossible. And what kind of reaction can we have to that but laugh? But then as I, as I thought about this, I realized that um, part of what's going on here is a matter of perspective. For whatever reason in this psalm and in the experience, I think of all of us, and certainly in the experience of Jesus when he was here on earth, it is so easy for any one of us, for each one of us, to look at the rule of God in this light, as something to be thrown off, as something to be rejected, as something that is restrictive and restraining and that ties us up and keeps us from going where we really want to do, go and doing what we really want to do. Um, and I will say as an aside that Psalm 2 is a, royal psalm, but in the hands of the New Testament authors, it becomes a messianic psalm. And it's quoted quite a lot um, in terms of explaining the person of Jesus and the events of his life. Uh, you can look it up in Acts chapter 4, for example, and you'll find it referenced there. Um, 
and and people look at this and they say, well, who is the Lord's anointed? It's ultimately Jesus. Christ, Christos is the Greek translation of Messiah, which means anointed one. Um, so there's a little Greek lesson for you thrown in there. And um, and the whole world stands against Jesus. And, and um, you know, the, the Sanhedrin, the Jewish ruling council, and the Roman Empire, they throw their best at Jesus. They do the worst they can to him. And it's not enough, right? You can't stop the reign of God. And that's that same thing here. But when you have a perspective that this is something we have to throw off, then that's still what you want to do. And the alternate perspective is given at the end of the psalm. So the nations and the kings conspire to throw off the yoke of God, but the psalmist concludes verse 12 by saying, happy or blessed, blessed are all who take refuge in him. Um, it's not just the psalmist who catches this. If you were to turn to Hosea verse, Hosea chapter 11, verse 4, you read this. God is talking about how he has led his people and how he has walked with his people. He says, I led them with cords of compassion and bands of love. I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and I fed them. Right? It's this marvelous picture. And it's the same words, right? So the nations and the kings gather together. We're going to burst their bonds. Well, what are these bonds? They're the bonds of compassion. We're going to cast down the cords. What are these cords? They're the cords of love. Um, and the whole psalm, Psalm 2, invites us into that perspective change. God is king. But what kind of king? is God. A.W. Tozer says the most important thing about a person is, um, I'm not quoting exactly here, but what they think of when they think of God, what comes to mind when they speak or hear the word God. And I have found this to be very true, that, that I can't assume when I'm talking to someone that they mean the same thing by that word that I mean by that word. And I've had some really fun moments in conversations where um, somebody finds out I'm a pastor and they tell me they don't believe in God. And I now, and have for some time, have had the automatic response when somebody tells me they don't believe in God. I say, well, which or what God don't you believe in? Now, some people are fairly materialistic and they don't believe in any God. And that's where the conversation goes. It goes to, I just don't believe in the supernatural. I don't believe that there's anything else out there. And that's one kind of conversation. But quite a few people, when I say, which God don't you believe in? Or what's the God you don't believe in? They begin describing this figure. And by the time they're done, I say, well, I don't believe in that God either. And that's that fun moment of like this kind of cognitive disconnect because they're looking at me like you're a pastor and you just told me you don't believe in God which is not what I told them. I told them I don't believe in that God. Because I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the God of the scriptures. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit revealed perfectly in the incarnation of the Son. I believe in the, the God who is a refuge and who loves to bless those who come to him. And so the psalmist can say, blessed are all who take refuge in him. But I don't believe, and this is to paraphrase Derek Kidner, that his patience is placidity. He is very patient, but he's not placid and inactive. And Psalm 2 points to that fact. Be warned, O rulers. Be wise, right? You're being given an opportunity right now. God will act. And if you continue to plot and strive against him and his anointed one, then his actions towards you will be wrathful and they will be deadly, right? God's patience is not placidity, but his fierce anger is also not loss of control, right? There's none, there's none of that here or anywhere else in Scripture. And that's probably one of the most frightening things about angry people in our lives is when they get really angry, they also lose control. God never loses control, and that's not the picture here. His laughter is not cruelty. We read that he holds the rulers in derision, and he sits in heaven and he laughs. It's not cruelty that he laughs at them. It's, it's the absurdity of the situation that brings out laughter. Because God is a good God, and he wants us to come and take refuge in him. He wants us to bear his yoke, which is easy and light and brings rest for the soul. He wants us to be held together in the bonds of his compassion. 
in the cords of his love. So with this reflection, I feel like the invitation is twofold. On the one hand, what do you think of when you hear or say the word God? Is it aligned with the revelation of scripture and primarily the revelation of Jesus Christ or not? That's the first question. Second question is, where might we need a perspective change so that we are taking refuge in God, so that we are coming to him and being blessed? I'm going to read the psalm one more time. Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds asunder and cast their cords from us. He who sits in heaven laughs. The Lord has them in derision, and then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decrees of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall rule them with a rod of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord. Rejoice with trembling. Kiss his feet, or he will be angry, and you will perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are all who take refuge in him. May you take refuge in the Lord this week, and may you find his blessing as you do so. Amen.